Hello my friends and welcome once more to yet another Red Gaming Tech video, myself Amata, where as always I'm here with the latest and greatest tech news from the last 24 or so hours. First off, we're going to start off with a peek into the semiconductor chip world. As according to a report from the World Semiconductor Trade Statistics Organization, or WSTS, the semiconductor manufacturing world has seen one of the largest declines in 35 years, which is uh, pretty crazy. The downturn on revenue for manufacturers for March was a decline of 1.8% compared to February of this year, and when compared to March of last year, it is a decline of 13%, which is pretty bad, I'm sure you'd agree, but it actually looks even worse when you look at the entire quarter. When you look at the quarter versus the previous, we saw a decline from 114.7 billion to 96.8 billion. Now, obviously, that is still a lot of money. No one's saying that you're going to find that down the back of the couch anytime soon, but that is still a sharp decline. Now, I do have a bit of a statement here from John Neufer, who is the president of the Semiconductor Industry Association Trade Group, and he said, quote, sales in March decreased on a year-to-year -year basis across all major regional markets and semiconductor product categories, consistent with the cyclical trend the global market has experienced recently. Interestingly, though, there's also comments going around from the market analyst firm IC Insights, who basically claim that the decline is actually worse than the WSTS reported and that it was actually a 17.1% reduction in revenue for the first quarter, which actually would make it the fourth biggest decline since 1984, which was actually before I was even born, just to kind of give that some context for you. And they actually claimed, quote, the first quarter is usually the weakest quarter of the year for the IC market, averaging averaging a sequential decline of 2.1% over the past 36 years, but the severity of the 1Q19, 4Q18 IC market drop has started this year off at a very low level. And to go back to, to John Neufer again, he actually has urged US legislator to bring into fruition some policies that would actually give the semiconductor industry a bit of a boost. And he said, quote, to help foster growth and innovation in the semiconductor industry and ensure continued U.S. leadership in semiconductor technology, policymakers in Washington should enact measures that invest in scientific research, attract and retain a top te technology workforce, and ensure open markets and strong protection of intellectual property. Now, you may recall that not all that long ago, Micron, AMD, and other, other semiconductor companies actually were seeking government funding in order to pretty much achieve just this. They have asked the US government for an increase over the next five years to $5 billion from the current $1.5 billion. Whether or not they'll grant that, of course, remains to be seen, uh, but John Neufer does already sort of line up with what Micron and a few other companies are trying to do. But we're going to move over now to NVIDIA. So before I actually get into the meat of this particular topic, I feel like it needs a bit of a preface. Basically, with the Turing dies, which obviously make up the 2070, 2080, 2060 and all that, there are two classes. There are the A variants and the non-A variants. They're basically the result of yields. And the lower quality dies have cores disabled and usually clock lower as well. And those are the non-A dies. According to a report from tomshardware.de, and Eagles Lab YouTube channel, where NVIDIA are going to be ceasing production of non-A Turing chips by the end of May. So basically this means that the only Turing graphics cards you can buy are the more powerful A variants. Now just to put this in even further context, you would typically see the A variants Turing cards using factory overclocked graphics cards like the OC or AVGA XCs or, you know, you know, factory overclock, you don't need me to rattle off brand names to you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So as I said, NVIDIA are going to be ceasing production of the non-A variants by the end of May. May um, for the 2060, 2070 and 2080 
Currently no word on the 2080 tie, but there's also apparently reports that we're going to be seeing the A-series dies being priced at the same price as the non-A-series, because obviously the non-A-series wasn't as powerful, so they were a little bit cheaper, and all that sort of stuff. So you might go, okay, why is NVIDIA doing this? Well, the obvious answer that I can think of off the top of my head is that the yield process has improved to the point where there's so few non a variants that it's not really worth Nvidia selling them. I mean, I'd like to say there's none at all, but that doesn't seem all that realistic. Uh, it's probably just a case of like, you know, maybe they'll keep them on hand in case they ever need to, as like a last minute stock sort of thing. But the implication here at least is that the yield has very much improved for Nvidia. So if you were thinking of buying a touring card anytime soon, I would actually advise that you hold off until at least the start of June because that means the graphics card you purchase is going to be the more powerful variants. So the new variants are actually going to be called slightly different. The TU names are going to be different, should I say. So we're going to be seeing the TU-104-410 and the TU-106-410 GPUs and factory overclocking is going to be standard on both of these as well. So again, if you're thinking of buying a touring card, then now is the time. So, before we move on to our final topic, just a quick aside. Some of you were probably familiar with Ashraf Essa, who was previously at The Motley Fool and also at Seeking Alpha, primarily known for Motley Fool's been working there for nearly six years. And he announced recently on his Twitter Hey y'all, after nearly six years at the fall, I'll be joining Intel as a technical marketing strategist for the Intel Graphics Group. So, Intel scooping up yet more talent. Just want to say well done to Ashraf and uh, wish him all the best. So let's go from a bit of good news for Ashraf there and a bit of uh, mixed news, I would argue, with Borderlands 3. So what I'm going to do here basically is kind of clear the air a little bit around Borderlands 3 because there was a little bit of confusion as to whether or not we would be seeing microtransactions in Borderlands 3. Basically what we had was some comments from Randy Pitchford during a stream that basically seemed to claim that the game wouldn't have any microtransactions or quote microtransaction eat free to play junk, but did say that the game would have quote all kinds of fun customizations like heads and skins. Then the creator director Paul Say went to Game Informer and did confirm that the game would be selling cosmetics, which does seem to run counter to what Randy Pitchford said, but I do believe it probably was just a case of poor wording from Randy here. But what you choose to believe there is up to you. There's a whole Twitter thread from him about this. He has gone and said that Game Informer has misrepresented what he's saying and all this other stuff. It's a bit of a mess, and honestly, I'm not going to really touch on that here. But you can read the Twitter thread yourself. It's linked in the description below. But the real crux of the matter here is, at least in my opinion, is the real important question does the game have microtransactions or not? And the answer is yes. Yes, it does. Because 2K have confirmed to Eurogamer that it does indeed have microtransactions. And they said, quote, players will have the option to reduce, sorry, purchase certain cosmetic items like character, vehicle, and weapon skins, but none of these purchases would be considered pay to win or impacting on the gameplay, like weapons or actual gear. So yes, the game is going to have microtransactions but these are going to be cosmetic only and they are going to be directly purchasable without the use of premium currency or loot boxes and also confirms that we will not be seeing any things like booster loot drops or anything affecting progression or anything like that. And We've also had confirmation from Randy Pitchford on Twitter that, quote, there will be tons of cosmetic drops as free loot in Borderlands 3. So you could argue, okay, would the better word for this be DLC then? Because that's kind of what it seems like. But it's obviously how it's being presented is as a microtransaction. DLC for costumes would be like a costume pack or a piece of co DLC content that has a costume pack thrown in with it or something like that. Just being able to buy one costume for say, I don't know, five dollars just to give it a price. That's completely made up by the way. It could be way more or way less than that, I don't know. That is a microtransaction in my head. And obviously it's good that it's only cosmetic, but you don't get an applause for that for me. Like you're still selling me a microtransaction. Just that the fact that it's cosmetic, it's like, yay, great, you didn't try to sell me a, a thing that's powerful, that's going to make me better than other people playing the same game. Congrats, like, you don't get applause for that. That's, like, the most basic level of what you should be doing. 
So yes, it, it you know it's fine that it's cosmetic, but I don't like microtransactions in full price games. Or my opinion on this is well known. None of you are particularly shocked to know this, I'm sure. So this does leave a bit of a bad taste in my mouth, even though personally I'm not a Borderlands fan. It's just not for me, not my cup of tea. You know, if you enjoy it, you do you, hun. You play it, you you have fun. Personally, I'm not going to be playing it, regardless of microtransactions or not. So it's just a, a principle thing. I just don't like this practice in the industry, period, no matter who's doing it. But yeah, it's confirmed. Microtransactions in Borderlands 3. Hopefully there'll be actual real DLC, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. The real game, the actual game, shall I say. It hasn't even come out yet. Anywho, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.